We need to look at Daniel chapter 12 um, so we can understand. This is one of the hardest chapters in the Bible to understand really what's going on. But I think once you get the basics down, you're, you're going to say, yes, that makes sense. Oh, we had an intruder at my property yesterday, a mean looking one. I seen out there at the street and Shelly says, someone is coming in the property, an intruder. My dog Tuff ran out there full blast. And I heard him a growling, and that goat just ran right down the road. He was gone. We're safe. We'll have no goats. So uh, I know that worries you, but I'll tell you why I wasn't worried. I know t glasses. Tough was going to take care of it. So this is why I want you to think about our chart and where we're at. We have three chapters left, 20, 21, 22. Last chapter... Talked about the marriage supper of the Lamb, the ending of all sin. The next two chapters is the millennial, starting this one, and then the new heaven and new earth. So, new heaven and new earth, regeneration of all, the millennial thousand years. We just got done with the time of the wrath of God upon earth, upon the wrath of God, the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to have the binding we just did of into the lake and of fire was where the Antichrist and the false prophet went. But we noted where um, Satan is going to be put is into the abyss, which is not internal lake of fire. And at the end of the thousand years, he'll be released from there, tempt the earth, and then be cast. But how do we account for these days and prophecy? So it's a transition pass, uh, chapter that, that is hard at first. But in Daniel chapter 12, there, there are some verses that will help us to know what's happening in the transition. And I want to organize our mind before we get there. So open your Bibles to Daniel chapter 12. And we're going to start there. Because I want you to think about God speaks quite a bit about this time period throughout and in um, prophecy. So now as we do that, let's look and see what God has to say about just this. We're going to start with um, verses 1 and 2 of Daniel chapter 12. The Bible says at that time, and now if you look at this and study, it's saying at that time of the end of prophecy that I've told you about. Daniel tells us about the wars. He tells us about the conflict. But now he's saying, this is the last chapter of Daniel. He says, now at that time, at the end of the prophecy, when God's wrath has come upon earth, look what he says is going to happen. And then we're going to start putting it together. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands, watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, and this is the trouble on earth, tribulation, but the ultimate um, Armageddon, such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that, at that time, your people will be delivered. Everyone is found written in the book. So mark, mark that, written in the book. These are the Old Testament believers. And then we see the Old Testament um, believers, uh, we see a renewal of that in the tribulation time. So now I want to drop down to verse 11. Well, verse 10, let's start there. And it talks about this time of renewal of the end of times. God has not forgot his Jewish people. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. And now it gets a little more complicated. Stay with me. And from, that, and from that time, the daily sacrifice is taken away. So now that's referring to after three and a half years of the tribulation. Tribulation is seven years. After three and a half years, um, the Antichrist takes over in Jerusalem of the tribulation. So now he's talking about the last three and a half years. Um, counting the days understands, helps us to understand. The abomination of desolation is set up. The Antichrist Temple Mount, and there shall be 1,200 
290 days. Now, from our math, we know that the three and a half years Daniel spoke about is 1,260 days. But he's saying that at 1,290 days is the 30 days of short period. And then I'm going to read in a minute to help you understand. And then look at the next verse. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. So all of a sudden we have the three and a half years and then Armageddon, 1,260 after the half of the tribulation. And then we have 1,290 additional three days, uh, 30 days. That's the 30 days at the end of tribulation of God's direct wrath upon earth, destroying all sin. But then now I want you to think when a president is elected, later we have what's called the inauguration, the taking of office. So, what then are you speaking of, Daniel? We have Jesus Christ has won the 45 days of wrath. And now what Daniel is talking about, blessed is he who waits for the inauguration that Jesus Christ shall take his kingship. You see, and that is the last period in um, verse 12. Blessed is he who waits and comes to 1,390, 1,335 days, and that's an additional 45 days of the inauguration of Christ. Now, why is this important? It's if you want to understand what's happening. Resurrections. First resurrection, obviously Jesus Christ. The next resurrection called the first resurrection of believers at the rapture of the church. Those who are alive and well will be caught up and then the tribulation. Part of the first re uh, resurrection is then the Old Testament saints and those who martyred during the tribulation period will be raptured at the time before the inauguration. Okay? So these come together, the church age saints, the Old Testament saints, and those that are um, killed for, martyred for Christ during the tribulation, that all comes as one, the first resurrection. Now, we're going to see the second resurrection. The second resurrection are those whose names are not written, written in the book of life. Unbelievers of all time. And now we're going to see timing on that is at the end of the millennial. And how I've always put that in my heart to remember is God loves sinners so much that he's going to wait to the end of the end of the earth as we know it, end of those thousand years, and then judge them, the throne judgment. So why am I spending the time with this? Is that we can start in our minds understanding the transition chapter of chapter 20. Um, so now open your Bibles to chapter 20. And I'm going to read a couple more verses of what I read and study Gingrich to help our minds to understand the depth of what's going on. So 45 day period. In chapter 20, verses 1 through 5, we're dealing with that 45-day period coming up to Christ's inauguration, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, over the millennial period. And this is what um, Gingrich says. After the 42 months of tribulation, um, two things must take place before God can scatter the power of His holy people. Um, one, he says, and this is back in Daniel, um, the direct wrath of God must be poured out on His enemies. There's the 30 days, 1260, end of the tribulation, and then the next 30 days, resulting in their destruction. This is done um, 30 days following the tribulation. And the preparation of inauguration of the kingdom of heaven must be made. This is done during the 45 days following the 30 days. And the preparation of the kingdom, several things must be done. Two things. The binding of Satan 
the resurrection of the Old Testament saints, the resurrection of the tribulation martyr saints mentioned also in verse 1 through 5. So now let's study. And I hope that helps you because I love this part. And I'm going to be there. So that's going to be exciting. And I believe you will be too. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven. Having the key, chapter 20, verse 1, to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil, and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And again, I'm repeating myself, but it's important to note the bottomless pit. And the bottomless pit is a dungeon, but it's separate than the lake of fire. Why is that important? The Antichrist and the false prophet are in the lake of fire. Internal punishment. Once you're cast in the lake of fire, that's a done deal. That's why those that are judged at the end of time for their works that don't have Christ are cast in the lake of fire and the gulf is so wide. Lazarus. So this is a temporary holding for those thousand years. And then Satan will be released to tempt the earth. And then he will be cast into the lake of fire. When he's cast into the lake of fire and all evil for all time is cast there, permanent, gone, then the new heaven and the new earth of the regeneration of the end. So, and for me, I find it fascinating. chain in his hand laid hold of the dragon the serpent of old is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years all of a sudden bound there cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up you know he knows a thousand years but then he knows when he gets out he has a short time to do his thing that's deception and deceive the nations and he shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I'm like, why, Lord? Think about the millennial. You know, like in tug of war on Sunday. The world, the flesh, and Satan pulling us. Here, Jesus is king. But remember, there'll be one thing there. And, and the scholars will say that the flesh of sin won't be there for the resurrected saints, but it'll be there for the people who lived through the um, tribulation and were not killed. And there'll be a fleshly part there. Even though Satan's bound and not tempting, the flesh is still there. And he's saying, what about those born? And, and there's some things that are bomb my comprehension. A resurrected body, you know, we won't be married, won't have children, but will they have children? And a lot of these sayings, I, I say, you know, I can only tell you different theories. But I do know this. At the end of that time, the Bible says Satan will be released. And God does everything for a purpose. Could it be that during those thousand years, Christ will rule, but there'll be some that have an outward obedience, but not an inward heart of obedience. And that'll be a time of testing. I don't know. I say my heart, be true, be true, be true, be true now. But don't think those thousand years are anything different. For the believer to be true, let the truth still be true. So now, and I saw thrones, verse 4. And they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls. What we're talking about now is the resurrected of the Old Testament saints and the tribulation martyred saints. And I saw the thrones and sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. There is the church age saints. And I saw the souls who have been headed for the witness of Jesus for the word of God, who will not worship the beast or his image and not received his mark on the foreheads or their hands. And there is the tribulation, martyred saints, resurrected and given in part of the kingdom, the thousand-year millennial kingdom. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So now also a part of that Old Testament. But the rest of the dead, those without faith, the Old Testament faith in the Messiah coming, 
did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So all the study is a study of resurrections, and there are more than we're talking about. There was the resurrections when Jesus was resurrected. There were others' graves that were opened, and that's a whole new study. But here it says, these are the first resurrections. Blessed is he who is part of this and has that millennial kingdom. Over such the second death has no power. And they shall be priests of God in Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. What a time on earth will that be? The end of the thousand years now, verse 7. Now when the thousand years have expired... Satan will be released from prison and he'll go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for battle whose number is the sand of the sea. And I still find that mind-boggling. With Christ as King of Kings, Satan bound the deceivers out deceiving millions. The sand of the sea, that's a lot. May we never become proud to think we're beyond falling. May we always stay close to God. You say, are you scared of falling? I'm like, no. I know my faith. They went up to the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints, the beloved city. And that's what Satan wants to do. To destroy God's kingdom, God's kingdom work. Where light reigns, darkness wants to destroy. The devil who deceived them and now was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So now we are at the end of the millennial. The end of millennial. Why do you say, Daryl, that the non-believers will be at the end of the millennial judgment? This next verse starts that. And God says there is going to be a great white throne judgment. And it's the end of those thousand years, right before the new heaven and the new earth of chapter 21. Many and many of funerals have I read chapter 21. And I saw the heavens descend from this read here. But I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, who faced the earth, and the heavens fled away. And there was no, there was found no place. For them. Sin has no place in God's presence, and He will not have it. I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. One is the book of life, the book of those under grace, the book of those whose sins have been forgiven. In the other books, the book of works, I call it. You ever think about what your portion of that book would have been if you didn't believe in Jesus? Would anybody like to be reminded? I could just think of what a horrific day. I could imagine a Pharisee standing up or maybe an American today, saying, you know, but I, I'm better than that sinner. The book will be opened. These are your works. These are your sins. And you are guilty in front of a righteous God. And there'll be no question of the guilt and who the judge is. And there's no place found for them. I think about, it's good that God gave us imagination because I'm not going to experience this. I can only imagine the first day in heaven, yes, 
but I can only imagine the despair. I think about those that this commercial on TV right now about an atheist, an atheist organization. And he says, I'm not afraid to burn in hell. You all know the commercial? Have you seen it? It's on TV. I'm like, wow, bold. Because imagine the despair put in front of God Almighty at the throne. And the books are open and they're judged and they're cast. And the despair of knowing where they're going. The same punishment and there may be realms of hell, and I agree to that. But the same punishment place as the devil. And the despair to know that's forever. I'm telling you, when I looked at him this morning, back when I was witnessing, I said, but your dad knows eternal life, and he's going to heaven. And I let him digest it, and then said, how about you? Are you going to heaven? You have eternal life? You have forgiveness of sins? I was just sitting there praying he wasn't going to yell and kick me out. And finally I said, do you want to pray? Do you want this? Do you want it? You have to want it. I'm not going to pressure you. He says, I'm holding your hand, aren't I? I'm ready to pray. And I'm like, whoa. Yes, you are. Do we understand this internal significance? the verses I pray we can stay in fire to reach the lost and I saw verse 12 the, the dead small and great standing before God books were open another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged according to their works by the things that are written in the books and the sea gave up the dead and who are in it. The sea of despair, the sea of sin, the multitudes in the sea of sin. People say to me, how come you say the sea? The sea in Revelation is the sea of sin. I said, look at the verse. And the sea gave up the dead. Those that are not part of the first resurrection. All those without Christ through the ages. And it gave them up, the sea of despair, unto judgment. And they were judged, each one, according to their works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, eternal death. You thought about that? I have eternal life. They have eternal death. <laughs> the hardest thing I'll ever experience is this earth. This is the best thing they'll ever experience. Isn't that sad? The Lord was really working on me this morning. Last night I sat with somebody I never talked to. Very strong, well-spoken man and his wife. Tend here a couple times. I had Danny and Pastor... Uh, High Hills Baptist Church, Pastor, 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 Pastor Randy. I'm trying to disciple Danny how to share Christ. Randy James, Danny is his deacon. I had both of them. I've already spent time and Randy James knows how, but he's learning what I do. Danny said, I want to go with you, Pastor. I want to see it. It's okay. Last night was a wonderful night. We sat there and we talked. Turned to the man finally and I said, wait a minute. I said, I've talked to you about your, your life, your family, your growing up. He said, you told me you're religious. He did. 
I said, I just want to know one thing. In your opinion, what do you understand it's going to take for someone to go to heaven? I shut my mouth. See how sweet it is for a believer to hear that? He looks at me. He says, I'll tell you what our opinion is. Only by faith in Jesus Christ and having forgiveness of sins. Not by works. I was like, yes. Yes. I turned to his wife. How about you? In Christ. I've believed in Christ. I've received forgiveness of sins. I'm like, yes. That was a good night. But I've already told you what I left with last night. We were there and probably overstayed our time. We talked and talked. And I was looking at the clock and I knew it would be past nine and I knew getting up to go to breakfast would be early. And uh, I got up and he said, Pastor, I said, yeah, you're the first one in 20 years that's been here sharing Jesus and in my house. And this morning I said to my heart, we have to share Jesus more. I'm not sharing Jesus enough. I'm not asking more people that I've never talked to about Jesus as much as I should. And then in the elevator, I'm telling you, there was a holy war in my soul. I'm going to go up and share faith. No, you don't want to go share faith. You don't know him. It says media family only in door. He's rejected Christ. And then I had to buckle down and say, no. I might get kicked out of this ICU, but I've been kicked out of worse places than this. But I'm going to share Jesus today. It's just been one of those days for me. How many of y'all think a good day? Last night. Chapter 20, we ought to think about. The best thing we can do is warn somebody of eternal death and tell them of eternal life. I've never witnessed like that like I did this morning when he brought up his daddy that has Alzheimer's can't remember. I said, let me tell you what he does have. Eternal life. I think I've said enough. Jimmy, would you ask God's blessing on us and on me? to keep witnessing. Thank you, Jamie.